You guys want to see a funny meme that I laughed at today? I'll put it right here. Isn't that funny? I think it's funny. Anyways, today I decided to do the book recommendation tag that was created by Miss stuff for her since she started it i've seen so many of my favorites do it and i just thought it would be a good way for you guys to get to know me a little bit better since i am so new to this y'all don't really know that much about me so what better way to get to know me than through the books that i read so i'm gonna go through all the questions i'm gonna answer them i'm gonna try my best to not repeat any books for the answers but if it happens it happens So we're just gonna get started with the first question, which is, what is a book you tell everyone is your favorite? Here's the thing, I don't really have a lot of people to talk about books with, which is one of the biggest reasons that I even started doing this. So I don't really get asked that question very often. However, if someone I didn't know very well asked me this question, I would probably pick something easy that doesn't require me to really explain what the book is about because talking to people I don't know makes me nervous. So I'd probably say Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn because everyone has at least heard of or seen the movie. Like I actually just read this for the first time a couple weeks ago and I really did love it. Like I gave it five stars. Would I say it's my all time favorite? Probably not, but it is one of my favorites. I really like Gillian Flynn's writing. I've also read Sharp Objects and Dark Places. Sharp Objects is probably my next favorite after this one. So good. I also feel like telling people that this is my favorite book gives me like, Gives me like cool girl vibes, but not in the, the way of like the cool girl. You know the famous cool girl monologue from the movie? Not in that way. I don't know which way I mean it. I feel like it just gives me like vibes. You know what I'm saying? Now the next prompt is a book that is your guilty pleasure. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you guys know that this is actually an autobiography written by Harry Potter himself? I don't know who JK Rowling is. So this series as a whole is probably my guilty pleasure. The Harry Potter world, the movies, all of it, guilty pleasure. Most obvious reason being that JK Rowling just is not it. We don't, the things, she just had to ruin everything by talking. So, so we don't, we don't love that. I also say it's a guilty pleasure because this is just like the most basic answer when someone says, what's your favorite book? Be more creative. I would just be lying if I said I didn't love these books or the movies, or if I didn't have a Dumbledore quote tattooed on my back. We're moving on. So for a book that everyone loved, but I did not, I'm gonna say A Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. Before I get into that, I wanna say, I really don't like talking badly about books. You know, saying that you didn't really like a book or you thought it was boring or it just wasn't for you is one thing, but to like completely rip apart a book and make objective statements like this book is horrible. I don't understand how anyone could like this book. You know, those types of like objective statements. I don't really like that just because, you know, your least favorite book is always going to be someone's favorite. And I personally am so like susceptible to other people's reviews. Like if I read a Goodreads review of someone completely just like trashing a book, that will like automatically affect what I'm thinking as I'm reading that book, which yes, I understand is my problem. I just don't like when people say really mean things about books. That being said, I'm about to do all the things I just said that I didn't like. I saw this book talked about so much on TikTok. On Goodreads, it has like an, a four average rating, I think. I could not believe how bad this book was. In my opinion, the writing almost felt very like YA to me, even though it's very much not a YA book. And I think I'm going to spoil the ending just because that is one of the reasons why I didn't like this book. So if you don't want to be spoiled, skip ahead. So the premise of this book is a man is cheating on his wife and the mistress ends up dead murdered in like their lake house. The wife is like a successful criminal defense attorney and she takes on the case to defend her husband. So in this book, you're getting both of their POVs. You're getting the husband's POV and the wife's POV. So it's first person, you're in their heads, you know their thoughts, you know what they're thinking. Spoiler alert, the criminal defense attorney wife is the one who murdered the mistress. But there are no there is nothing that points to that throughout this entire book. It just literally comes out of nowhere at the end. And I think what makes a plot twist a good plot twist is that it makes sense. Not that it was so obvious that you could immediately predict it, but like there are things in the book that point towards that. Because it's written in first person, you are in the wife's head 
when you're in her pov but all of her thoughts all of her narration is just i wonder who did this you're she's trying to figure it out along with you like she has no idea who did it there's nothing in her mind that points towards the fact that she's the one who killed the mistress her narration and her point of view is also trying to like fool the reader which doesn't make sense unless she knows that she's in a book being read about does that make any sense so yeah i didn't like this book oh <gasps> I found my bookmarks, my little leaf bookmarks. Anyway, one other book that everyone just loves, but I didn't really was Shatter Me. Now, I don't even remember when I read this, but I just remember not like loving it. Like I was kind of bored while I was reading it, but everyone loves this book. Everyone loves this series. I remember I didn't hate it as I was reading it. I just wasn't super into it, but I might give it another shot. I'm so happy that I found these. Next up is a book you read the fastest, and that would have to be Womb by Duncan Ralston. I read this in my Goodreads Highest and Lowest video. Go watch it. But this is the book that I, hands down, read the fastest. Not because it was so good that I couldn't put it down, which... But this book is probably the shortest book I've ever read. It is 129 pages. I read it within two hours, maybe. I still don't think I fully processed the things that happen in this book. This book is horrifying, but it's meant to be. I would only recommend this book to a certain type of person. And that is the type of person who likes to horrify themselves for fun. Sometimes I am that person. So for a book that deserves more hype, I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk more about an author. Well, I guess authors. And that is Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen, I think is how you say her name. I might just be missing something, but I feel like I really don't see these two authors talked about a lot on, you know, whether it's book talk, YouTube. But if you're into thrillers, you need to read these books. I've actually only fully read The Wife Between Us. I have started The Anonymous Girl a couple times, but I, then I just get sidetracked by other books that I wanna read. But I do remember this book was just so enthralling like the plot twist like i could not put this book down because i was so eager to find out what was going on i love the types of thrillers where you know something's going on you know something is going on but you just you don't know what it is you just want to keep reading so you can find out what the whole big deal is that is my type of book i don't know if that made any sense at all but that's what I like. This duo deserves more hype. Next up, we have a book that is becoming a movie or a TV show. So apparently, Akitar is in the works of becoming a TV show with Hulu. And honestly, I'm kind of scared. I don't even know if I'll watch it. I truly don't know if they'll really be able to capture what this is in a TV show. I just have such a specific image of these books in my head of the characters. Like if they don't get the casting right or if the casting is off, it will ruin everything in my head for me. But I also saw that that Sarah is like heavily involved with the writing. She's being super stubborn. So hopefully she pulls through for us. But I kind of would rather they just leave this alone, to be quite honest. So for a book that I've reread the most, I'm gonna have to say A Court of Mist and Fury. I really, I don't want this video to end up being all about Akitar, but it is one of my very high key favorites. And this is also just a fact, a book that I reread the most, like if someone was keeping track of it, this is an objective fact, like I cannot deny that I have read this book too many times. I've never done a full annotation of a book like this before. And let me tell you, it is hard work, but it's so beautiful. I'm so proud of this. I cannot fight what this book does for me. Now I'm just contradicting myself because for the very first question, a book that you tell people is your favorite, deep down, this is probably my all time favorite book. And again, it's such a basic answer. So I didn't want to say this. The feeling of reading this book for the first time, I will never be able to capture that feeling again. So for this next question, I don't really have an answer because it is what is a book from a genre you don't typically read and i have to admit i have not been very adventurous with my taste lately i read what i'm in the mood for i like what i like and that happens to be fantasy and my my made-up genre of creepy weird mystery thriller horror that's what i stick to so one genre that i really don't read is romance and i would argue that romance is like one of the most popular genres on tiktok on youtube and i see so many people raving about the same romance books that i'm starting to feel a little bit curious so i think i'm gonna do a reading vlog of reading popular romances for a week i think that would be fun and i would love to know which ones are your guys's favorites so if you want to leave me some recommendations for some of the romance books that i should get into i would love that think of the most popular romance books right now i have not read them and I, i'm not saying that in a oh i'm 
I'm different type of way. It's just, it's never been a genre that I've been interested in. Like, I really think the last true romance I read was after, when it was on Wattpad and I was in like middle school. But I kind of want to get into the romance a little bit. I kind of want to dip into this romance genre. So let me know. For a book that deserves all the hype it gets, I'm going to talk more so about an author. And that is Carissa Broadbent. You know, she is having her moment right now in the fantasy world. And I'm here for it. I also read The Serpent in the Wings of Night in my Goodreads Highest and Lowest. And I loved this book. She also has the Six Scorch Roses novella, which I read after that. And now I'm currently on The Ashes of the Star Cursed King. So for these next three questions, I'm kind of breaking the rules a little bit because not only am I reusing an answer, but I also kind of have the same answer for all three of them. So I'm kind of just grouping these three questions together. And that is a book you would recommend to someone, a book with your favorite characters, and a book that you'd want to limit. Specifically for the first question, like if my friend comes to me and they're like, I want to get into reading, what should I start with? I'm always going to tell them Akatar because not only do I want my friends to experience the beauty of this book, I also just think that this book in this series is such a good way to like get into fantasy and get into reading because these books are so easy to fall in love with. Like I think it is such a good place to start if you're not a reader and you want to get into fantasy. Like, like these books will definitely hook you and get you into fantasy. And for books with your favorite characters, I'm just going to say all three, all three series, you know, Feyre, Aelin, Bryce, I, I think about them every day, every single day. All of these characters in all of these books are so special to me. Like, she just knows how to write them. I love these characters with my whole heart. And again, I never claimed to be different. And for a world that I'd want to live in, probably Akatar would be my top. Obviously not when they're like in war. I don't know what would happen if I were to encounter Reese or Cassian or Az in real life. But I would love to be any of these main characters. Again, I never claimed to be different. For a book you thought you would hate but you ended up loving, this was also hard for me because I don't read books that I think I will hate. I read books that I think I will like, which yes, I understand that that is not being adventurous with my tastes. We're working on it. But a book that I ended up liking way more than I expected to would be Tender as the Flesh. I still think about this book all the time. This would also be a book that I read extremely fast, like I read it within a day, and I think about it all the time. Like, yes, it is quite horrifying, and you do have to have a strong stomach to read this book, but the concept of a society like this was just so intriguing to my brain. Like, the concept of the game reserve and the doctor who could do all of these experiments on literal human bodies that you would never be able to do in real life. Also, if this book ever gets made into a movie, I need Pedro Pascal to be the lead. For a book that made me cry, I also don't have an answer. I talked about in my Little Life video how books just really don't make me cry. I think I said the last book that made me cry was Where the Red Fern Grows, and A Little Life did not make me cry. It was emotional, it touched me, it was hard to read, but did it physically make me cry? No. So I just, I don't have an answer for this question. And it's not like it's hard for me to cry in real life. Like, I cry. I don't know what it is. Like, books, movies, and shows will sometimes get me. Maybe I can make that a thing, though. Like, I can search for books to make me cry, and we'll see what does it. And lastly, a book I wish I could read for the first time. I would have to say Brother by Ania or Anya Allborn. I don't have it with me right now because I gave it to my sister. She does need to give it back to me. There is nothing like experiencing the plot twist. Of that book and i tell you i i started out listening to the audiobook and i was on a walk i was on a walk in the park i was listening to the book and the first plot twist came and when i tell you i literally stopped dead in my like stopped walking jaw open because of what i just heard and there was a lady behind me i was stopped st i was like and then i just see a lady walk like looked back at me i was like like there's a plot twist in the middle of the book and then the ending of the book, the, experiencing the ending of that book, again, that is a great movie book. Brother would make such a good horror thriller movie. That would also be a book I would recommend to people. Like if someone came to me and I felt they gave off more like horror thriller vibes rather than fantasy vibes, that would be the book I would recommend to them. So that was all the questions. I think it would be really interesting to do this same tag at like the end of the year and see how all my answers change because I am planning on reading so many books still to come. So I'll probably do that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you liked it. Again, I hope you got to know a little bit more about me. I want us all to become friends. I hope you stick around and I'll see you in the next one.